Hey guys, welcome back. Or Bomb here, bringing you another one of our live deck profiles. Now, one thing before we actually get started, we are going to be profiling Glaceon uh, Omastar, but I do want to say that I actually don't have my mic right now, so I'm recording using the audio of the phone, and I actually think the audio of the phone is good. I don't think it's better than my mic, but it's good. So, um, it actually makes recording these videos a lot easier on the go. So if you guys, let me know if you guys hate this audio or don't mind this audio because I it'd be nice to record these like anywhere I am and not have to worry about lugging my computer and my mic with me. So um, let me know. But yeah, so let's talk about this. Now we do have Glaceon, Omastar today. This is a deck I was actually really excited to play because I think Omastar is really cool. It's item lock as long as your opponent uh, has less Pokemon in play, than, as long as you have less Pokemon in play than your opponent. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna try to put the pictures up this time, but I'm gonna rush to upload these videos. So if I don't, I do apologize. Sometimes I forget, but hopefully I will remember this time because I am recording these a little bit ahead. So maybe I'll be able to edit these tonight. Who knows? Um, but tonight's also Kingdom Hearts, so I want to play some Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about. Don't, before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share all the good jazz, share. We, we hit 5.5k when I'm recording this, so that's really exciting. Almost at 6k, so let's go ahead and share the videos. Uh, the booster box giveaway is still going on uh, for today and tomorrow's video, and then that's probably going to be the last video that we have besides the... Um, the pack opening video. So three more videos left for you to comment and enter the giveaway. Also, don't forget to check out the update video I made where I can show you the other way to enter the giveaway, but I won't mention it here. You have to go watch the video. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. Now, we're gonna talk about EV Glaceon. Now we do have four EVs. Uh, I'm actually recording at this really weird angle, so hopefully that looks okay. Four EVs, energy evolution, no, not much to talk about, quick draw there. Three Glaceons, I actually just sold my Glaceons at Dallas, so I don't have Glaceons anymore, which is really sad because like Glaceon was one of my favorite evolutions and I really like Glaceon, but I need money, so I had to sell my Glaceon, so. I printed these proxies for the video, but Glaceon, its ability to ability lock <laughs> GXs and EXs, like Ninetales, Zorg, Lycanroc, um, what are some relevant ones? I know there's any relevant ones coming out of Tag Team, but, uh, I mean, those are the ones that come to mind, those are still gonna be good cards post-Tag Team, so. Uh, I guess Zero Aura as well, because Zero Aura is gonna be really good in these lightning-based decks. Um, being able to turn off all those abilities with Freezing Gaze, slowing down your opponent so you can snipe them down with cards like Frost Bullet is really, really, really strong. And then Polar Spirit GX is generally our GX tech of choice if we're trying to take knockouts. We're also playing two Vaporeons, another card I don't even have, <clears throat> I don't have yet. Also, I, I couldn't print the English scan, so bear with me. But Vaporeon, 210 HP with an ability that lets you heal your active Water Pokemon for 30 HP. So obviously if you have two of these down, you can heal your active Glaceon for 60 HP. His attacks also aren't that bad. It does 40 plus 30 more damage for each water energy attached to it. I have to sneeze and it's like not coming out. It's like stuck in the back of my throat. Ah. Okay. Should be gone now. <laughs> so if you load up a bunch of waters on this dude, you hit 130 with three energies. I believe 36 is 90. Yeah, you hit 130. 130 is more than 90. 130 can actually finish things off. So it's actually kind of relevant. So you can attack with this, but it's mainly here for the healing. <clears throat> It's Cure Shower GX heals all your water Pokemon as well. So if you're fighting against a deck that can't exactly Oko you, then you have the ability to use Cure Shower uh, to stall for a little bit as well. So two of those. And then of course, the man of the hour, the brand new Omastar it is a fossil Pokemon, which is really cool with the new fossil mechanic. You can actually rare candy into these fossils, which is the main reason why we're playing it. 130 HP and its ability is all that matters. If you have less Pokemon in play than your opponent, your opponent cannot use any items. Now. It's not so much the item lock that makes this card good. It's the pressure that it puts on your opponent. Imagine all these decks right now. Um, you have card, you have decks like Zorark. You have Malamar. You have, um, what else is there? Zorark, Malamar. There's a lot of other tier ones. I guess technically you have this Needle Queen deck that we're about to show off in the next video. Uh, there's are Meganium decks and things like that. There's a lot of really good decks in the format is what I'm trying to say that have to have a big bench. And you could get away with just having this and then a Glaceon in the active in a lot of cases. Sometimes you want to back up Glaceon, but in a lot of cases, you're going to get away with only having two Pokemon on your bench. <clears throat> That's a lot of pressure on your opponent's side because even if they're not item locked, with only two targets on their bench, uh, then Glaceon has a lot easier time sniping things down and taking knockouts. So... You put in a lot of pressure, and if they do end up going all in, they can't use items. Imagine a Malamar deck that can't continuously use Treasure and Rescue Stretcher and stuff like that, or Acro Bike. Imagine a Zorak deck that literally is based completely off of its supporter and its draw for turn. Like, that's it. It can't do anything else. Um, <laughs> it seems pretty strong to me, so I like the item lock a lot. I think it's pretty decent. I don't know how good it's going to be. 
uh, we will have to see if it doesn't if it does well in future tournaments. But I can't think of better partners for Omastar than Glaceon. It gives you a pseudo ability lock as well as an item lock, so it makes it very very strong and very potent. Um, and that's it for the Pokemon line. Because we're only playing four Eevees and no other Pokemon, we're going to lead Eevee every single game, which means you'll almost always get your turn one Glaceon. Um, so that's really that's that's already like something exciting on its own, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the items. We have four Ultra Ball, and I'm also playing four Nest Ball, or two Nest Ball. I'm actually kind of on the fence about playing Nest Ball at all. Uh, I like, the, the reason why I like Nest Ball, right, is because you wanna make sure you can continuously get those EVs down, and you can't discard your cards all the time. You actually have a lot of important cards on this deck that you can't just afford to discard, but, excuse me. Excuse me, but, uh, at the same time, since we're always going to lead the Eevee, maybe it's not the most necessary thing in the world uh, because you only really need to dedicate two Ultra Balls to your Omastars because you only play two Omastars, right? And um, the rest of these Ultra Balls can be dedicated to more Eevees. So <clears throat> I, I do say that these are like my first, actually they're more like my third drafts of the deck, but Nest Balls is something I'm like, I can theory craft cut. I, I can cut based off theory crafting is what I'm trying to say. We are playing four of the unidentified fossils. Keep in mind that it does count as a Pokemon, so if your opponent does take a knockout on the fossil, they do get the prize. But it's also cool because it's essentially a free retreat. Uh, so if you if you Guzma, um, you can discard this card at any time, including when it's in your active. So you can always Guzma, make the unidentified fossil active, discard it, put the Glaceon back active, and take a knockout or something like that. That is a definitely a play you can do because you're only going to need to get maybe you only you're only going to need like two of these per game, right? So. Um, but the most important part is finding a turn one, which is why we're also playing two fossil excavation maps. Uh, the main reason why I played is to, sorry, sorry, it's like right over here now. Uh, search your deck for an unidentified fossil card, reveal and put it into your hand. That's the main reason why I play it. We also have the ability to put it from our discard pile into our hand if we do need to continue doing those Guzma shenanigans like I mentioned earlier. Uh, also, because there's no mic, I don't know if I'll be able to edit this audio. So if you guys can hear the AC, I do apologize. Um, but yeah, we wanna find, we wanna find these cards, which is why we're playing a uh, like essentially six ways to find them early game um, so that's th there's that uh, we're also playing three rare candies only three um, I feel like you could probably cut a nest ball for a fourth one though just to consistently get out the Omastar I just haven't had any issue getting out the Omastar with only three and there's reasons I'll, I'll show you guys the reasons in a second with the supporters also two energy lottos <clears throat> another thing you can cut for the nest balls are more energy lottos if you want to find your DCEs easier or just energies in general easier as far as tools and stadiums go, we're playing one choice helmet. Uh, choice helmet just being able to reduce damage to you from GX attacks is pretty nice. That means they have to hit you for 230 to take an Oko on you, and being able to reduce damage while healing with the Porygon is pretty strong. And then two, Viridian City. We've talked about Viridian City in almost every video, but discard a card, put a basic energy from your deck to your hand. It's essentially like playing two extra energy cards, and it gets you energy cards throughout the game too. So it's a very, very strong deck, especially in Glaceon decks, or in Ev Evolution decks, where you really need to get that energy turn one so you can actually start putting in all your pressure that you need to put in turn one. So, great card, I like it in this deck. Uh, I don't think you need more than two. Uh, maybe if you want more than two, just to continue countering cards like Shrine of Punishment or any other uh, Prism Star Stadiums, I could see you adding more. It's definitely a card worth adding. It's a really strong card. Let's talk about the supporters now. The supporters, this is gonna be the fun part. Uh, we got uh, four Cynthia, ooh, there's the glare. There's our good friend, Mr. Glare. All right, four Cynthia and four Lily. And uh, I believe we also have, yeah, two Erica. So 10, count them, 10 draw supporters. We should be as consistent as we can be, but it doesn't just stop there, ladies and gentlemen. We also have one of my new favorite cards from the set. I'm actually gonna pull this out of the other deck real quick since we have the English scan. That is four Bills Analysis. Now, I really, really like this card and I feel like people are sleeping on this card, uh, like heavily, but uh, the Kate pulled one so we can show it off here. Uh, Bill's analysis. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal any two trainer cards you find there and put them into your hand. Shuffle your other cards back in your deck. So it's really good for getting any two cards you want out of the top seven of your deck. This includes Rare Candy Fossil. This includes Nest Balls. This includes other supporters for the following turn, draw supporters and stuff like that. Uh, because we play so many items and trainers in this deck, it's so easy to actually find them, or items and supporters. It's so easy to find the combination. You can find, you can get your Lotto to help you get DCE. There's a lot of things you can get with Bill's. Um, why it's so good though, is like, I know a lot of you guys were playing in the old format, right? Whenever we had Sycamore, Professor Sycamore, Professor Juniper, if you guys play Expanded, you guys know how you play, like, here's my argument for this card, right? You guys know how you play Sycamore and Juniper, uh, sometimes just to try to find, like, one or two cards to finish your combo piece? At, Bill's analysis is the same thing, 
in the sense that you're looking for those cards. Like obviously Sycamore has the added has the added bonus of letting you discard, so you're thinning your deck by seven. Um, because you're drawing seven cards and stuff like that. But if you're looking for combo pieces, which is why a lot of decks play four Sycamores and like, uh, like four Sycamores back in the day, uh, Bill's analysis is like your way to go because it literally gets, lets you get any two trainer cards. That's so strong for you. It's super strong for a lot of different decks. So that's why I like this card a lot. Um, put that away now. God, that AC is super annoying. It's only as soon as I started, as soon as I got downstairs to record too. Uh, but yeah, four of those means that it'll help you find your Viridian Forest, it'll help you find your Fossils, it'll help you find your Rare Candies, it'll help you find your Energy Lottos, it'll help you find any draw supporter if you don't have a draw supporter. It'll help you find Guzmas, which we are also playing three Guzmas. And you know, in case our drawing wasn't enough with just 10, we decided to throw in two Judge. We're actually pretty good at disrupting our opponents, so um, we're playing essentially 12 draw supporters here, uh, as well as seven Bills. So consistency in this deck is actually super high. Uh, obviously you have games where you just have a hand where you have hand cluttered with supporters but who cares like what do you <laughs> why is that a bad thing there's it's not like you need any items for the for the deck to work out the only reason why you want the items is to find is is, is lotto rare candies and that's it really like the rest of these cards are just search so if once you get your search done then you're kind of set for the rest of the game and as far as the energies go just four dces and uh, six water energy. It's nothing too complicated. Uh, six with the two Viridian Forest and Energy Lotto means that you'll be able to find them pretty easily. We had that one game where we whiffed. That was a huge anomaly. Uh, but if you really want, like I said, I feel like those nest balls are like cards you can play around with. Uh, you can maybe replace both of them for like two more Lottos. If you want to put another water energy, you can. I was originally playing with seven, but I cut it down to six because I felt like seven was like more than enough. Uh, so I decided to put, make a six so it's just enough, you know what I mean? Um, but other than that, like, I've been able to get out Omastar in almost all my games. Sometimes I have really, really weird games where I just can't do anything. Uh, mainly because, like, uh, Lily is... Well, not really Lily. It's just, like... I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. Because there's... I mean, I guess it's just, like, an every deck situation. But I have just dead hands sometimes. You know what I mean? And it's kind of, like, hard. It, it's hard to explain why you have dead hands when you have that many draw supporters. When you have that much search, you know what I mean? But sometimes it just happens. But it's not like it's dead forever. Oh, now someone's taking a shower. Uh, Alright, well, I'm gonna end the video here because there's too much background noise. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share all the good jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.